Hey guys, my name is Demiri and today I'll show you how I remade the leads from Together We Grow by Furetal. I didn't focus on the entire ARP section and everything underneath the leads, but I did remake the leads and the bass. And this is how it sounds. So I've just muted the reverb and let's just dive into Silent One and I'll show you what I did. And I just want to give you some general tips and feedback on how you can create your own leads. And of course you can learn more from the project file in the link down below. So as you can see I have four different layers that play the same melody. And that's just to create some nice and full sounds. Personally I always start off with my top lead. So the first layer over here is the top lead. And I just always try to back that up with some hyper saws. So this is how the top lead sounds. And if you're curious to how you can make your top leads, always just focus on getting a nice and stable sound and then putting an LFO on top of there with the pitch. And if we take away these LFOs right now from this silent patch, you'll really notice that it's just a boring lead. But just when you add the LFO on top of the pitch for your top lead, it will really just create a nice, nice kind of movement that your top lead just needs to stand out. And now I always back up my top lead with some hypersols, and that's the second and the third layer that I have over here. And in general, I'm just always trying to make one lower hypersol like this one. And the lower hypersol only has one of the oscillators pitched one octave up, and I have a higher one which would sound like this. And as you can see over here, I pitch some more layers one octave up to give a little bit of a higher feeling. And together with that top lead, it just creates a more full sound. And always, always put on some LFOs on top of the pitch, even for your hypersol layers to create more movement. And then after that, I just added a square lead because obviously, if you hear the lead from Together We Grow, it does have a square in there. So I've had to add it somewhere and I just made a separate square layer. That really worked well. And as you can see, the hypersol chords are made with two layers and they almost play the same thing. I only have for the higher hypersol chord version, I just pitched this one up one octave to just create a little bit of a more bigger feeling. And if you take a look into the silence, you'll notice that I'm just playing around a little bit with the amount of voices. But that's just because if you keep adding saws on top of saws, they will take up a lot of space. So I just tone down the voices a little bit so that it still feels full, but it's not as thick as it is when you just add more voices. So that you have more space for other stuff in your mix, maybe the ARP section, which Verta also added. And I can't stress this enough, always just add a pitching LFO on top of any type of layer. Even if it's a hypersol chord, just add that pitching LFO and it will create so much movement and character for your leads. And now to make everything a little bit more fat, I always add a warmer layer for my chords. And these warmer layers are basically just adding a bass note, the root note from the chords. I just add that one octave lower so that it just feels a little bit warmer like this. And that just helps creating a more full sound because if we take the chords, just the hypersol chords, they sound really thin. And if we then add that lower warm layer in underneath there, it's just gonna sound a lot better. And that will just create a nice and full quart layer to put behind our top lead. So right now it sounds like this. And all you need to do is just add a nice warm sub layer for like a hyper saw and pitch that down low and it will create a nice and full sound. Now onto the reverb, and the reverb was something special for this one, and I just want to show you how you can create huge reverbs like Fertile did as well. So the thing is, I'm using multiple reverbs, and these multiple reverbs just help creating a bigger sound. And one is sidechained, as you can see in the project file as well, and the other one is just normal. And the thing that I'm doing is I'm using one compressor to compress the signal from that reverb, and the other compressor, in this case Fruit Delimiter, will just act as a side chainer 
so that it pushes away the reverb when the node is playing and then it kicks back in when the node isn't there. So with only that sidechain reverb it sounds like this. And of course that already sounds huge, but I just want to add that second layer for our reverb so that it sounds even bigger. And it's just the same settings for the reverb. There's nothing weird changing in between the different reverb settings. It's just the same setting for this one and for this one as well. So just add these two reverbs on top of each other and they'll help making an even bigger sound. <laughs> In the past I've always been looking how to create the biggest reverb for my leads and I've just found a way that works for me right now and that's just adding this sidechain reverb and a normal reverb and I put those together with my full lead, the dry one over here, to one lead to make a wet lead output and I put a compressor on there and this compressor just squashes down the lead a little bit, pushes up the reverb so that it's more on the same level and this compressor will really make your leads a lot bigger already. <laughs> And then if you're really perfectionistic and you listen to those master tracks, the reverb still sounds bigger. But the key is that that just is a part of mastering. It just squashes the whole dynamic range of the track again. And that just makes the more quiet sounds a lot louder. And that creates the illusion of an even bigger sound. So right now these leads are already really huge. But then if I add like a limiter on top of here, and I wouldn't do this in my production stage, but this is just to show you that you don't need to mind it that much that your lead even though you're using two reverbs isn't as big as the master tracks this is just to prove that when you put a limiter on there when your track gets mastered it's just gonna sound a lot bigger still <laughs> And as you just heard when I toggled the limiter on and off, you really notice that that limiter pushes up the reverb even more, which will help create that bigger sound. Now I hope you liked the video and you learned something from it, and don't forget to check the download link in the description. And hopefully I'll see you back soon again. Cheers!